Growing up, I was privileged to be part of beautiful stories that were told by my grandmother. My grandmother, we called her Nyapasa because she had twins. She had a very peculiar way in which she told her stories. And most of her stories, you would actually believe her. Because she was very passionate about her stories and the way that she would tell her stories, you would actually think that she was there. And so she told us a specific story about a land that never sleeps. Well, this land that never sleeps, to her, she thought was somewhere that was really, really far from here. And well, I was very inquisitive as I was growing because I really wanted to know about this land that never sleeps. This land she called Putu. And so I was very inquisitive. I really wanted to know this place. I thought maybe this place was like in our backyard or maybe this place was somewhere that I could actually walk to and go. And so I asked her, where is this place? And well, to my disappointment, my grandmother told me that this is the place where colonizers came from. And so this was a story that was told by her husband, and she came and told us that story as well. And so growing up then, I thought to myself, wow, this far land that doesn't really exist but could be there, I really, really wanted to go there. Well, my name is Mutetelen Kalama, and I call myself the daughter of the African soil. The reason being is because I love Africa so much. And well, Zambia is in Africa as well. And so I'm passionate about Africa as a whole. I'm passionate about Zambia as a whole as well. Well, being original for me has had to do with simple things that others might consider trivial, like signature hairstyles, sometimes clothing, Sometimes hair, that is called by my name. I mean, when I do certain hair, my friends go on and say, oh yeah, this is the Muka hairstyle. And they go on and call it like that. Sometimes it's just about the way that I carry myself, in the way that I talk, in the way that I talk about this Africa and this specific country called Zambia. Oh yes, Zambia. Zambia is a beautiful place. And most of the times, we don't want to talk about positive things about our own country. We think maybe our neighbors are doing so well, and mostly in Africa, we refer to countries that are doing so well and don't talk about our own country. A bad hair day, bad hair day. I know this resonates so much with us girls, or rather women, and for guys, well, not that much because you shave your hair and you have your beards on. But then for us, a bad hair day is really something that ruins our day. Imagine waking up one day only to realize that your, your power has cut. And especially in this time where Zesco is cutting the power so much. You wake up and you need to tone your hair. Or maybe you need to blow your hair and it's kinky, especially for our natural hair. Well, our natural hair really has a funny way of making our day go bad. Because this Hair to us is really a crown. And when you wear that hair, it gives you a certain level of confidence. It's like you just bought new clothes and you want to move around so that everyone can see you. And so hair for us most of the times is really important. And well, this really defines our image, like the kind of image that we're going to have as um, days goes on. We really dwell so much on our hair and we really want it to be perfect. So what comes into your minds when you look at yourself in the mirror? I mean, a lot of times, especially for the young women or the girls, we are always looking into the mirror. The mirror can be anywhere in our house, either in the bathroom, any bathroom that you find, because there are always those selfies that we take in the bathroom, looking at ourselves in the mirror. Sometimes these are mirrors that are just in our bedrooms. Sometimes in the car, like most of the times when I'm going um, for work and I'm very late, I'll just get the mirror in the car and look at myself. What really comes into our minds when we look into that mirror? I mean, sometimes negativity is born and bred around the mirror. Sometimes positivity is also born around there. Negativity in the sense that 
for a girl who feels her image is not good enough and she looks into the mirror, that crushes her. And maybe for the boy who's just becoming of age and has got acne on his face, he doesn't really want to use the mirror because he feels the mirror is not something that um, really represents what he has. And so I was only 13 years old when I would look at myself in the mirror. And for me at this time, looking at myself in the mirror was not really about fashion because I had no idea about fashion. But then looking at myself in the mirror for me was about validation. I really wanted to know what was wrong with my brown hair. Well, I had very brown hair, um, hair that, you know, when you would walk around, people would think that this hair is dirty. And yet it was just the color that it had. And for most of the times I would look at myself in the mirror and ask myself, why do I have such hair? Or maybe sometimes I would feel a little bit too lighter than my friends in class. And they would, you know, tease me to say you're too light. And I would look at myself and think, what could be wrong with me? And well, sometimes it's the same mirror that I used to dream. Because dreams are free. I used to dream a lot. And I would be seated besides the mirror, imagining of dreaming. Sometimes I would dream that I'm being interviewed by people. Sometimes I would give long speeches in my dream. And well, because growing up, my father used to buy us a lot of books to read. Who? My father is here in, uh, today. He used to buy us a lot of books. And for me, that enabled me to dream and dream and dream. And I would dream so hard, such that at the time that they are coming to call me, Maybe someone comes to call me and say, supper is ready. And I'll ask questions like, what, co what color is the Nshima? Why? Because I'm deep in my dreams, thinking about the future. And well, dreaming, as I dreamed, was what would come in the years to come. I didn't really know that this was what would come in the future, where I would be featured in newspapers, or maybe where I would be on TV, talking about things that really concern me, or things that concern others. My land to, my, my journey to the land that never sleeps. Well, this place that I talked about, that my grandmother used to talk about, was simply countries like America, the UK, or any other Western world. But the way that she made it sound so far away, I had really given up that I would ever go there. Well, in this land that never sleeps, I am constantly talking about the beauty that Zambia has. And a lot of us would argue to say, what does Zambia have to offer? I mean, what will people really come to see when they come to Zambia? But for me, most of the times when I go to this land that never sleeps, which is any other European country or any American country or any Western country, I am always talking about Zambia. Why? Because I believe Zambia in itself is beautiful. It has so much to offer. Zambia in itself, Zambia in itself is beautiful and it has so much to offer. I mean, just think about it. If you told people about this country, Zambia, what do you think they can come and see here? Are you just thinking about the compounds that are around? that they are coming to see? Or are you thinking about the beauty, maybe the Victoria Falls, that can um, give them a very good view as being one of the seven wonders of the world? Have you ever thought about that? And so, even talking about Zambia as a country, I have gone on to really represent myself in the way that I should represent myself, in the way that People could relate me to a country, and when they look at me, they should be able to say, oh yeah, she is from Zambia, or she's from Africa. And well, this has enabled me to rather escape or make people wonder and ask questions like, were you really born in Africa? Or maybe questions like, when last were you in Africa? I just came from Africa. When last were you in Africa? I just came from Africa. Or did you really study in Africa? Because those questions are the ones that people ask. They're the ones that raise a lot of thoughts in our heads. You tend to think and wonder. Oh, so my education system really cannot enable me to give such a speech in the land that never sleeps just because I was born in Africa? Those are thoughts to think about. 
And well, as I went on, I really did think about a lot of things in my life. And getting to a point where I could actually stand in front here and speak took a lot of courage. It took a lot of passion. It took a lot of people that I knew in my circles to really pull me up. I remember one time, just after completing high school, my father had given me a newspaper to read. And in this newspaper, there was an advert by the United Nations. And so the United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund advertised for children in Zambia to apply to become what they were calling climate change ambassadors and stroke HIV ambassadors. Immediately I saw this opportunity, I thought of my friend. I said, wow, I think my friend will really, really qualify to do this. And so I went on and thought about it, contemplated about it. And after a week, I really convinced myself that maybe this is something that I could try. So I went on, tried, and applied. Well, after months of waiting and waiting, I came to get a response. Someone called me and said, oh, you have actually qualified and you're one of the children that are going to represent Zambia to become child ambassadors. I was really, really excited. At the time that I got this news, I rushed back home to go and tell my mother. Well, typical of African mothers, the response was something that anyone could expect. My mother said, no, they are satanists. Do you know them? Have you been there? How do you know that these people are not coming to steal you? And so, well, that got cleared off when my brothers came through and really verified that this was a great opportunity for me to go on. As time went on, I went for this prestigious conference with a lot of children around Zambia. And I was the child that sat at the back because I didn't really think I could position myself in front so that I could see what was really happening. And so I went and learned and learned. But then, as time went on, I got to really excel um, in that field, and I was selected to be a facilitator. And so what this meant was that from the children that had gone to this conference, I was one of the children that now was an adult, selected to train children. And on behalf of the United Nations International Children's Fund, I contributed to training 1,500 children in Zambia who were to be called climate change ambassadors as well. And so during my years here, I was very, very lucky to be found with a great team of friends. And these friends of mine pushed me very hard. And so we would have conversations because we built great friendships from such an opportunity. We would have conversations around and ask ourselves to say, what does the future look like? So we came to a conclusion that we could actually do something. And so one day we were seated just having coffee with my friends in Lusaka. And we thought of an idea and said, what do you think if we can also allow other children to have the same opportunity and the same exposure that we have gotten from the United Nations to form something that they can be proud of, to form something that can really, really be part of them. And well, this is where this was born. And so we came to a conclusion that this idea can actually work. So we went on and started an organization that is called Agents of Change Foundation. And for this organization, we use radio to talk about issues that affect young people in the sense that radio in itself is not just about going on radio and talking. It builds your self-confidence. It builds your self-esteem and also other things that come at, along the way. And so for us, our young people that we work with, our youth reporters that we work with have excelled so much. And this is really what we wanted to see. Even though we are young people, we went on and said, we are going to start something that our fellow young people can get to and also be proud of. And so they are part of a network that is called Youth Reporters. And so they report on issues that are affecting them in their communities weekly. And so they run radio shows that are focused on climate change, HIV and AIDS, sexual reproductive health and rights. And one of the greatest achievements is that for these young people, they have gone on to represent us at high level meetings. And this is the greatest achievement because when you see someone that you have trained go on and do amazing things, some are running organizations, 
some are going on to be active citizens. Because really our motto is to catalyze a generation of young ethical leaders, these leaders that can go on and take Zambia to a next level. And so we have worked with these young people in a way that is different because we have focused on leadership. And for us, we have said, for them to come out of this program, it's not just about go going on radio to talk, because we know that radio is really common. And a lot of people use radio, especially politicians, or sometimes for entertainment. But did you know that 80% of Zambians have got access to radio? We have access to radio. And 60% of Zambians are listening to the radio, meaning that every minute, every hour, someone is listening to radio. And so that's why we said radio should be a powerful tool that these young people can use to really change their lives. For them, it has been about the friendships that they have formed in this organization that have taken them further. It's about the self-confidence that they have gained. It's about the self-esteem that they have built such that they have become active citizens in our country. And for them, they have continued to really do amazing things um, on radio. Well, dreaming is really free. And if you think about it, you have all the time in the world to dream. Because most of the times we think about things that require money, or sometimes we think about things that require us time. But with dreams, dreams are really free. You can dream as much as you want to dream. But the only secret is that you need to work on your dreams. Because at times, I think we dream so much that we fail to really go ahead and do what we have dreamt about. And so, when everyone dreams, it is just allowing you to get closer to your goal. Getting closer to that, to that dream that you think will actually work for you. And so, being the change that we would want to see in our communities is really not about our friends or the person seated next to you. Because as growing up, I had always been like that, where I would pass on the opportunities to my friends and say they could do it better. And I never thought in my lifetime that I would actually do what I needed to do. So the fact that dreaming is free, we can go on and dream and become what we really want to see and become the change that we want to see in our communities, catalyzing a generation of young ethical leaders that can be able to take our country to the next level without looking at the person next to them, but thinking about them, the change that they want to see in them and the change that they want to make for their children. Thank you.